Today, we're going to talk about seating the bariatric patient. And the important thing to remember is that it's not just about a bigger chair. Assessment of the bariatric client, we must ensure that we're not just looking at a wider chair. This client group have unique challenges in sitting and have unique body shapes. Assessing these clients will almost always need at least two people to have a successful outcome. So what are the challenges with seeking this client group? They have a fear, a fear of sliding, a fear of falling, a fear that the equipment is not strong enough. They have a fear of being moved and often this client group have breathing difficulties due to their size, which makes them even more anxious. They also have embarrassment. Sometimes they are very young. Uh, maybe they have embarrassed because if they fall, they cannot get back up independently. They could be embarrassed if their clothes are ill-fitting and not covering them properly. So we would always encourage you to bring out a gown with you when you're going to do a seating assessment, just in case you need to use that gown to cover the person up to make them feel less embarrassed. They need reassured because many times these clients have fallen, they have fallen off chairs, they maybe have broken equipment in the past, or maybe equipment wasn't strong enough to hold them during an assessment. So you need to reassure them that this product was made with their needs in mind, that it has a seven year warranty, that we are experts in this field, and that this is part of our everyday work and we've got the experience. So make them, reassure them. I just think as well, you need to get into the mindset of someone with, the, the, with that size. And what I did recently when I was at a bariatric conference, I first of all sat in our own chair. I put the seat back at the position that was comfortable for me. I loaded my feet and I sat in the chair as I am now. I then put on a bariatric suit, which means that I had much less movement around the hip region. So I had a very large abdomen. There's a lot of adipose tissue behind the knee. And I sat down on the chair in that same position. And what I found was my, I was very breathless. And I felt very squeezed up in the abdomen area. So I had to open out the back angle. And that just gave me such a feeling of relief. I then couldn't load my feet on the foot plate as it was. So I needed to elevate the leg rest in order to load the feet. And it, doing those two things just gave me such much more comfort and confidence that I wasn't going to slide off the chair. So I think it's important that we need to get to know how these people feel before we start assessing them. So some other factors to consider. They have a reduced range of motion due to a mass of body parts. They sometimes have difficulty repositioning themselves. They have an altered center, center of gravity. And in many cases, the bulbous gluteal region prevents them from maintaining contact with the back of the chair. And if they can't do that, they will slide off the chair and they'll feel very unstable. So accommodating the, the bulbous gluteal region is very important to get a stable base of support in the chair. There's two very important key measurements to get this right. And the first is from the posterior aspect of the calf to the most distal part of the gluteal region, in effect, the seat depth. We need to also measure from the evaluation surface to the top of the gluteal shelf, because these two measurements will assist in determining the height of the back support and particularly the lumbar support. And if we can get these two measurements right, it means that we get the person right back in the chair, they're making contact with the back of the chair, and that's going to reduce sliding from the chair. So those two key measurements are very important. Getting the right chair is imperative. And why is it so important? Because these clients are at risk of developing pressure injuries. They're at a greater risk than our average population because they have a greater skin weight, they have reduced vascularity and perfusion in adipose tissues. They're slower and impaired wound healing. There's reduced mobility and ability to transfer. And these clients also suffer from breathing difficulties. So the oxygen isn't traveling around the body as much as in the person who's more mobile. So because they're at a higher risk 
of getting a pressure injury, we must ensure when we put them out on the chair that the, we are reducing that risk. So what are the two shapes? I'm just going to look at two shapes today and what the solutions for these shapes might be. So the first shape is the apple shape. And an apple shape has excessive weight distribution in the belly area, leading to anterior tilt and anterior instability in the chair. So this person does tend to sit forward in the chair. The pelvis does tend to be tilted forward. And the solution for that is to use tilt and space and back angle recline. Some clients may have restricted hip flexion due to excessive abdominal tissue. Uh, and the, the, the solution for this is to open out the back angle. So this accommodates the hip angle and gives a much more comfort in the abdominal region. The abducted legs may lead to increased pressure on the lateral aspect of the knee and the lower legs. So the solution for that is to have an adjustable seat width on the chair. We don't want any increased risk of uh, friction and shear on the outer aspects of the leg due to the arms of the chair being too close. So the next uh, position, the next shape is the pear shaped. Clients with gluteal or femoral obesity carry their, most of the weight below the knee waist and above the knees. This is what we would uh, categorize as a pear shaped. So most of the adipose tissue is below the waist and above the knees. They can also be differentiated into pear abduction, which is where there's excess of medial tissue uh, which means the legs sit in abduction, and that prevents the femurs from achieving a neutral alignment in sitting. And that may lead to an increased risk of pressure injuries at the knees or at the calves. So for this client group, we must consider adjustable seat width. Then there's pair adduction, and that is caused by an increase in excessive lateral tissue. And we not, must consider the risk of skin breakdown on the medial aspect of the thigh and maybe even some sort of a pobble or some sort of a separation there that's going to open out that angle. So that has to be very, uh, very well assessed to reduce the risk of breakdown in that region. So let's look at hip flexion. Hip flexion is challenging due to the excessive abdominal tissue. And the solution may be open up the back angle. But this will necessitate some trial and error. And I really need to emphasize at this point that assessing the bariatric patient is not a one-off task. Assessing the bariatric patient will be an ongoing task. And that is why having a chair that is adjustable, because you will change that every time you see the client before you get it right. There's a lot of trial and error with the bariatric patient. So it's an ongoing process in order to get it right. Knee flexion and extension. A combination of tight hamstrings is necessary to prevent the client from sliding off the floor. However, with this client group, the restriction in knee flexion may also be due to excessive tissue. So we need an adjustable foot plate on the chair, adjustable leg rest is imperative for them to load their feet properly on the foot plate. Now, when we increase the width of a chair, we then must increase the foot rest width as well. So the foot, uh, the seat width and the foot rest width must always be considered together. And when you have someone seated in the chair, you should put your hand on either side of the, the lateral aspects of their thigh to ensure that there's no contact, or very little contact between the thigh and the seat. There must be at least the width of your hand there to reduce the risk of shear and friction. So just, some, uh, just to give you some um, statistics here, it is estimated that by 2050, obesity-related diseases and complications are going to cause an extra 45 billion a year to the health service. Now, a lot of these costs will be in pressure injuries because as we said earlier, this group of clients are at a higher risk of developing pressure injuries. And that's because they can develop injuries, uh, uh, pressure injuries at the folds of the skin, across the buttocks, and other areas of high uh, adipose tissue. 
The skin damage may develop in locations where there's tubes or oxygens or catheters, the lateral aspect of the knee or the lower leg. So we need to ensure when we are seating our client that we are reducing that risk where possible. So just going to quickly take you through the specific features of a chair that you must consider. Arms should be removable. This will help to uh, when you're putting on a sling to get the sling in situ properly, having removable arms is a vitally important. Also, it may help with the sideways transfer if that's the type of transfer the patient is doing. An adjustable back rest, uh, uh, back angle. We, we talked about the importance of that to accommodate hip angle. If someone has a lot of adipose tissue in the abdominal region, you need the back angle to open out in order to make them more comfortable and for them to breathe easier. Forward tilt on a chair will help the client do a stand transfer and the negative angle on the leg rest will help to load the feet. And loading the feet, as we know, is vitally important for any client and specifically for the bariatric client. Other features to consider is making sure that there's power adjustment so that they have some control over their own position. This client group have lost a lot of control over things because of their inability to move. They don't have the same control over their environment, but having a powered uh, chair will give them back some control. It also is much more uh, suitable for the caregiver. Tilting space is essential to redistribute pressure and also for the client who is sitting in anterior tilt. We need to ensure that the material on the chair is vapor permeable and breathable because this client group do tend to have a higher body temperature and sweat more. And we need to ask ourselves, is the client's weight stable or have, they a history, have you obtained a history so that you know, are they reducing in weight or are they likely to gain weight? But the important thing here is having a chair that's adjustable to meet the long term and changing needs of the patient. So uh, if you want more help or uh, with doing assessments for the bariatric client or you want to uh, trial a chair, please get in touch with us. We also have a handbook, the clinician seating handbook, which you can uh, order. And this is uh, has got all the information that we talked about in this seminar. And if you need, if you need more information, please get in touch. Hey, so this is a demonstration of the Seating Matters Bariatric Sorrento. So when we designed the bariatric chair, we have put all the clinical thinking that you'll see in our clinician seating handbook and the research around bariatric patients. And we have put that all into the design of the bariatric chair. This chair has made a life-changing uh, for life-changing events for a lot, a lot of patients and their families. We've been able to get people who have been in bed for weeks, months, and even years and mobilize them, get them out of bed and into this chair and allow them to sit safely and feel comfortable and feel safe in the chair. So I'm gonna run through the, the main features. Uh, it's very important in our bariatric chairs that we have electronic controls. So the remote control, because it gives the person sitting in the chair the freedom to move their own position or it makes it a lot easier for the caregiver to look after the patient and the, all the main movements are done by the handset. So you've got your tilt and space, you've got your leg rest elevation so we can elevate the legs and then we've got back angle recline. So the importance of, of these features, the back angle allows us to open up the hips. So for example, when we're sitting in the chair and I'm gonna just, show you how this would work in a normal seated position. If I was sitting in the chair in a more upright position, but if I had a lot of weight here, sometimes opening up that back angle allows to take the pressure off this area. And that's something that we find with a lot of bariatric patients is having the ability to open that back angle just allows them to really sit more comfortably and open up the space here. We know in bariatric patients that their center of gravity um, can be different from uh, you know, other patients. So for example, if they've got a lot of weight going forward, there's gonna be a lot of weight going through the feet. So that's why the importance of positioning the leg rest is, is important, and especially the foot plate. So in the Seating Matters Handbook, we talk about the four principles of pressure 
management, the four principles of clinical seating, and one of them is loading the body properly. So when we look at the bariatric patient, we need to load the body different than we would um, for a standard chair. So um, with the, the foot plate, for example, the foot plate is all height adjustable. So we can set this to suit the right height of the person's legs. So again, thinking about the weight here, if I'm sitting in the chair, normal uh, weight distribution is about 19% of your body weight goes through your feet. But if I've got a lot of weight here, that could be often resting on the legs, putting even more weight through, through the feet. So that's the importance of having the foot plate and having that uh, being able to adjust. Like I said, the center of gravity can often be different. So if I've got the weight here, in a standard chair, you'll see people leaning forward, the weight's pulling them forward, they're gonna shear in that direction, there's the risk of falls, and that's why people feel uncomfortable and often have a fear of sitting out because all their weight is bringing them into that forward position. One of the causes of that that we often see is when you have someone with a lot of weight here on the gluteal shelf, what happens is right through a standard back, they touch the chair here, but they can't get any support through the top of the back. So that means they're sitting further forward. In our bariatric Sorrento, we have identified that as a major risk. And what we have done is we have made this bottom cushion adjustable or totally removable. So we can load the gluteal shelf right back into here. Now we can support the rest of the back and head. And now that person can tolerate tilt and space because before if they were just getting support here, when you tilt, it just opened up the back and stretched and strained on the back. But now this person who traditionally was falling forward can sit right back in the chair and tolerate tilt and space. And this is why we can safely get these types of patients up out of bed and they're able to sit for longer because now we have altered the center of gravity we're using, tilt, we're using gravity as their friend, not their enemy, so it's allowing them to sit back and be more comfortable rather than have that feeling that they're gonna slide forward and fall out of the chair. So having this gluteal shelf accommodation allows us to use tilt and space with patients that we weren't previously able to do that with. Obviously, the size of the chair is very important. So if we're using this chair in a multi-user environment, for example, um, you know, your bariatric patients are obviously not all going to be the same size. So the, all, the chair is fully adjustable. It's also very good for uh, patients who maybe have, uh, their weight is changing quite often. So we've got the seat depth adjustment. We've got seat width adjustment. So we can make the chair wider if necessary. And then for mobilizing and transferring, we also have the arms that are fully removable, so we can take that arm off, so you're not having to lift that patient out over the arm to put them back into bed. We can bring the chair right up beside the bed, and then you're only lifting them a small bit and moving over, again, reducing that fear of being transferred and just making it easier for the caregiver as well. The arms also go into different heights and different angles, so we can set it at the correct position. Uh, and the most comfortable position for the patient. We often find with bariatric patients, sometimes they can't reach the armrests, so their, their arms maybe rest on their own body. So with that comes a reduction in the support that they're getting. So that's when we would recommend the use of lateral supports. So we can bring these in to help support and keep a nice midline position. These are all memory foam as well, so even they're in close contact with the body, they're not going to cause any pressure issues. And we would always recommend having one on each side, so you have that equal and opposite uh, force to be able to keep a nice midline position. You can also get headrests and other accessories to help with the, the posture. Designing the chair, we obviously have put a lot of thought into the, the patient sitting in the chair. Um, but we've also looked at how we make this easier for the, the caregiver. So the handset was one example, but another really good feature on the bariatric Sorrento is the center line wheel. So you'll be able to see underneath, we have a, a fifth wheel attachment, 
and what that does is it allows us to turn that chair really easy and it keeps it in a straight line so if we're pushing it down a corridor it takes a lot of that effort and work out of having to push the chair so it just makes it a lot easier and I would highly recommend that feature. We also have braking casters that can be applied right around the chair so if you're pushing the chair up against the wall we can lock the front or the side so, or ideally we can lock all four. So with the, the Bariatric Sorrento uh, this current version has a 650 pounds or 45 stone weight limit and the chair has been tested to way beyond that so we have a lot of confidence in that weight. Uh, the leg rest is designed for, to accommodate the type of patients that would have that weight in their legs as well. So the, the strength of the chair, and we actually have a seven year warranty on the frame which is unheard of with bariatric equipment. So we're, we're really uh, confident in the build quality and that's something that we like to get across to the patients because often if they're getting out of bed for the first time, they do have a fear of the equipment that they're using. Having the, the confidence that they know that it's strong enough is something that's going to be really uh, helping, helpful to get them up and give them uh, peace of mind when they're sitting in the chair. So in the Seating Matters Clinician Seating Handbook, we talk about the four principles of clinical seating. And we have applied all four principles in the bariatric Sorrento. So we've talked about loading the body properly. So for example, having the footrest that's adjustable, we're able to load the feet. Having the gluteal shelf uh, adjustment, we're able to load the back. Having the tilt and space allows us to offer redistribution. Having the lateral support gives us the posture care. And then finally, we have the cushion so all right through the back the seat and the calf pad this is all memory foam and it's covered in this dartex material so it's multi stretch and breathable so it's allowing for immersion into the the chair and it's allowing the patient to sit out safer and sit for longer and feel comfortable it's also really good for infection control because it can all be wiped down and when we talk about the four principles we always leave the cushion to last because the cushion is often the go-to answer in a lot of uh, people's mind when it comes to pressure care. But if you aren't loading the body properly or you're not giving the support, the cushion, no matter how good it is, is not going to, to give the correct uh, pressure relief. And that is especially uh, apl applicable with bariatric patients because something that we forget, if we look at the pelvis, the bariatric patient's pelvis isn't any bigger than a standard pelvis, but we go and spend thousands of pounds on a, a massive air or gel cushion when really it's only the same size of pelvis, it's this part. So you can see how loading the body, loading the feet, loading the back is going to be really, really important here. And that's something just to bear in mind when you're thinking about the types of cushions that you're going to be using with the bariatric patient. And ensuring that they're strong enough and um, sometimes we can see that they're they're too soft and then they bottom out when the weight is applied so sometimes for someone you know at my weight this may feel uh, too dense or hard but for the bariatric patient the feedback that we get on our cushions is very very positive so that's a quick run through the bariatric Sorrento if you would like to see the chair um, if you would like a joint assessment we often say we, that seeing the chair is one thing, but it's not until you get your patient into it that, and get their feedback that you know how it works for them and if it uh, would be suitable for you and, and your patients. There is another chair and something that we're excited to talk about. We're going to be doing another uh, video and another presentation for the more mobile bariatric patient. So for people that need help to stand. So keep uh, tuned in with uh, Seating Matters and uh, we'll be able to share some of that information as well. So thank you.